I think you're cute Can't hit you up on Instagram Cause you are the only thing I'm thinking of And I can't stop it I'm wishing you and I were talking But even if we talked I wouldn't know what I would say My social awkwardness would just get in the way And maybe I'm a little bit shy But I'll try my best to compromise Cause oh, I think I really like how you're always staring at your feet Pictures only tell so much So I'm thinking of a message to send you But it's hard for me to tell if it's too long or not enough But talking to you is all I want And I'm trying hard to take a chance And send you the message I'm hovering over sent But it's so out of pressing Maybe I'm scared that you might hate me But I'll try not to mess it up I don't wanna confess too much I just wanna get to know a little more about my Insta crush I don't know what's the best way to start Cause if I'm not careful I might let it on my heart Out of my chest too fast But I really wanna make the conversation last So I'll start off slow with something really simple like Hey hello, I kinda like your dimples with that so dumb But I can't think straight I've been thinking really long and now it's getting late so these were the cows that were in special care. When we asked what that meant, the tour guide, who is also the son of the owner and also kind of running the show there, he explained that there wasn't anything wrong with them. They were just the personal pet cows of his dad. Now onto the nursery. This is where the cows are kept for the first 40 days of their life. They are fed milk two times a day and they are there until they become too big for the enclosure basically. They were eating a sort of milled grain that was mixed with cow's milk so that they could get used to eating grain. All of the calves except one were female and there was one male that was going to be sold as a padrote. I'll put what that means in English on the screen. And for the other calves that are born, they're basically sold off to either other farms that sell meat and so they'll grow the baby cows so that they can become big and fat and ready for consumption or they are later just sold to be veal and consumed that way. And they have these cauterized head wounds because actually, and I learned this at the tour, Female cows also grow horns and they just have the practice of cauterizing the horns so that they never grow out in order to prevent the calves and the cows when they grow up from hurting each other and themselves with their horns. I really didn't know it. It seemed a bit painful to say the least but the cows were so cute and it was so cute to see how each one had their own personality and some were very outgoing some were very shy and some of them were very affectionate as you can see and this is what they called the colonies so this was where they grouped the cows that were already over 40 days and they divided them into four different sections and they were usually there until six months or if they got too big for these enclosures. Basically, after this, then they would go out into the fields. This farm had a large number of square acres for all these cows. But yeah, after this, then each year they would get pregnant. And here you see a really, really pregnant cow that was supposed to give birth that week. And she was so hungry. She would eat anything we put in front of her. It was actually really funny. This is the model cow. This was the cow that they have trained to really be around people and be comfortable around a lot of people. 
Cows are very, very sensitive, and this is a cow that feels comfortable because of training and everything to be milked in front of us because cows won't be milked if they're under stress. They're honestly really emotional, sweet creatures. It, I was in my feels. <laughs> this cow was super comfortable with walking in. As you can see, she was really excited because there's food in that little container at the end. They gave us a demonstration of how they milk the cows. They milk the cows twice a day in this farm and they do it at 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. Finally, we ended the tour with some ice cream that they made from the farm's cows. Hello, so I'm home. I need to shower because I am stinky. I smell like cow. I have cows licking me. I was touching cows. I did wash my hands, obviously, and I ate and I got my nails done. So I do want to talk about the fact that I had a really fun time at the dairy farm. As someone that doesn't actually consume dairy products like i try to limit them as much as possible because if you saw on my instagram story i am lactose intolerant but also i just don't agree with the dairy business that much i would recommend the book eating animals i'll put it on the screen right here so that you can check it out if it's something you're interested in learning more about i'm definitely not someone that gets preachy about my beliefs it's one of those things where it's like you can have an opinion about something and try to make it the most complete as possible but obviously Obviously, like all information that we consume we're getting it through a lens and a sort of message that the person that's producing it wants us to get so I don't know if it's maybe because of the media that I consume that's why like I have these certain beliefs but I would really recommend that documentary I think it's one of the vegan documentaries that are the least reactionary and at least kind of shaming people that eat meat because it really focuses on the industry side of things and how we can make better choices to prevent the suffering of animals anyways i've just been in my bed i've been like on my phone like passively studying like either listening to the podcast of divine intervention or doing my flashcards or at some moments i've been reading the mistake by l kennedy i would like to finish it today even though for some reason it came out finished on my goodreads it's not finished i feel like i'm not as into the second book as much as i was the first one i don't know why like i think it has to do with the fact that i'm like in very much a reading slump and I don't feel like reading anything if I'm being honest but life comes in waves and reading comes in waves I that's why I consider myself a mood reader because I don't like to feel like I have to do anything for any reason especially my hobbies I don't make an income from YouTube or from my book reading at this point in my life and if maybe I did make an income and it supported me then I would feel more like, oh my god, I have to do this. But right now, this is just something I do for fun. So if I'm not finding the fun in it, I don't want to feel like, boom, you are a failure because you didn't read it. Because I already put that sort of pressure on so many other aspects of my life so definitely something i'm avoiding even though it's it's like a hard habit to break if you're someone that's like that's their modus operandus of their entire life for you to just like separate that and make it so that your hobbies are separate and they're for fun and you don't have to put the pressure on yourself it's like still a hard transition and a hard mindset to put yourself in so i think i'm just gonna end this here thank you so much for joining me today in my self-care day and i really want to get back into making more vlog style videos but i definitely think that i need to like work my way up to a weekly vlog because each time i've tried it i struggle a lot and i'm also just like in this whole mindset of step two getting this done getting that bread and leaving <laughs> not leaving because obviously this is my career that was rambly thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye